Well, drones are becoming more and more popular. They're being used for a range of things, from snooping on celebrities to helping gather evidence for police. And now, they're also being used in local fields. Video journalist Terry Trembath explains. Watch! Watch! With that cautionary call, Chris well, Healy prepares for liftoff. Yeah, I have over 200 hours of flying on this mission, so I'm very confident. He's making a business out of flying drones. While that's not necessarily a new idea, his focus is he's targeting farmers. This started as a result of my uncle asking me, how can I raise the yield on my crops? Well, that's a really good question. Well, you got to grow better. Well, how do I grow better? How do I get out there and ask a plant, how healthy are you today? By using these high-flying eyes in the sky with state-of-the-art photography to survey crops, Healy says it will save farmers a lot of money when it comes to chemical and spray. There's a lot of factors that are at play there, um, but anyone that can have their costs reduced by tw at least 25%, that's money in their pocket. Healy is taking advantage of new rules implemented by Transport Canada this month. Any drones or unmanned aerial vehicles that are under 2 kilograms no longer need a special permit. Before this, if you were caught flying one without a permit, there was a fine of up to $5,000. But no matter who's flying them, they need proper training. Operators need to know all the rules of the air. We are expected to meet the same level of safety qualifications that Air Canada and WestJet meet. At this point, Healy has four drones, but says he'll add more to the fleet if the demand for drone-driven agriculture is as high as he hopes. Terry Trimbath, CBC News, Okotoks.